What's up everybody, welcome back to the channel. Today we are gonna dive into the Ned rig a little bit. I know a lot of you have tried this technique out. Um, and I have a Guggenbait rattle and Ned right here in front of me. This is probably one of my favorite colors, but there's a lot of great colors out there. But the cool thing is that the one thing that about a Ned rig in general seems to be it catches a lot of fish. And it catches some big ones too, especially smallmouth. I've seen it and spotted bass, but largemouth as well. Now the problem with the Ned rig is what? See all the stuff behind me? Yeah. Heavy cover, not very good for it. Or, or a lot of cover, not very good for this open hook like this. So I started playing around with some stuff from BMC and I got a, it's called, this is called a finesse rugby head, okay? It has a two odd hook on it, it has a football shaped head on it. And this is actually an eighth ounce. And I started playing around with it, okay? Now, take my rattle and Ned, very simple, turn him around. And all I've been doing, the key is you don't want a really big hook for this because it'll mess up a little bit of the action. Right there, it fits that perfectly. So I can fish this around a lot of the grass, around a lot of the heavier cover around the trees and stuff and get bites. Now, this is great for smallmouth and great for getting bites and largemouth. But another thing that I'll do, let me slide him right here, is I will grab a five inch lunker log cut him in about mm, a third off, ah, salty, okay? So if I want a little bit bigger profile for a large mouth, I'll Texas rig him on this head and I have just that right there. So right now I'm gonna start with the rattle and Ned and we'll try to play with him for a little bit, see if we can't get a couple bites. I'll show you what I'm talking about and why this technique is so effective. It just catches good ones, it catches lots of fish, it catches big ones and, and it's just a lot of fun to fish. So. Let's jump into it. I'll show you what I'm talking about. Okay, so I just started thinking about this a couple years back. Like, man, that Ned rig seems to catch a lot of fish. And maybe I need to figure out a way to rig it to where it does a lot of the same features. It twirls really well. Oop. Like first cast. That's exactly what I'm talking about. They bite that thing. They bite it. Oh my gosh, right there, hooked right, top of the mouth, little rat on Ned, put him back. So I'm literally able to cast this thing and I've used a 16th, I've used, I've used an eighth quite a bit. Eighth or a 16th is normally what I use, it's normally it, but I've not really played around with a little bit heavier one. I'm sure it does just as good, but this is something that um, I've seen just it's worked for me it's definitely something that's worked for me and you just catch a lot of fish <laughs> you throw that little dude around you're gonna get some bites okay so let him back i know fish landing violation i know i know i know i hear this all the time i'm glad brody's not an official today let me see if i can cast over there so i'm casting at like the edges of these bushes and like traditionally and I'm getting sometimes in them and just popping it out of there. Traditionally, that would ultimately, I'm gonna get hung up probably, more than likely. Good good possibility of it anyway. The one thing about a, a you know, any any kind of Ned rig is what I, I just try to pop him around, okay? It seems like it's just a reaction thing. And, and as far as weight and size go, I, I if I can get away with a 16th, sometimes I will if I'm fishing super shallow water, but really, a eighth seems to work real well for me so i'm actually popping out there's a little bit of grass a little bit of brush you cannot see that's f still flooded i'm just fishing along that little edge and we're sitting actually in about seven well seven or eight foot of water let me see here just cast them along right there oh picked up that this line was swimming off. I love that, yeah. Oop, I just see my line jump. Must be something small. Has to be something small. See if my line jumps there. That's the thing right there, is you're gonna catch a lot of those on a net rig, especially with a very populated lake of, of largemouth. You're gonna catch a lot of those because those guys are very hungry. 
I was wondering why it was keep on biting me. Try to get a little bit bigger bite. I'm actually pitching around the weeds right now. There's a little bit of grass right here. And the thing is, this thing glides really well. So I'll just sort of pitch him in there. In the weeds right there, see what I can get. The thing I love about this little setup is I don't, I don't tend to get less bites. Dude, and it seems like the only thing I was worried about was like a jig head normally like falls pretty well, like in spirals. And that's why I think a Ned Rig's so, such a good bait is because of the action it has. But it seems like I get the exact same action out of this particular rig with that, that, that finesse rugby as I do with a regular style jig head. Now, of course, if you can throw a, a, just an oak exposed hook, you're probably better off because you're gonna hook them a little bit better more more times than not. But if you're around a lot of grass and wood and cover like I am right here, a lot of that stuff right there is underneath the water. So I can't really see that. So I'm sort of hopping that Ned rig through there. If that hook's exposed, I'm hung up all the time. And that's irritating. So now as far as setup, I throw my seven foot medium action spinning rod. Um, that's one of my favorites just because it has a softer tip. Um, for Ned rigging anyway, that's what I normally try to use. Um, and then one of the best braids, in my opinion, for finesse tactics in general. So I use braid to a fluorocarbon leader. I, I tie the FG knot, eight pound suffix advanced fluorocarbon. And then I throw eight pound nano braid. This is suffix nano braid. Um, really works well for me and it's super supple, which makes it cash really well. And like for me, I think that's a, that's a huge deal. And it's just like, it just well, it allows that bait to act right. You don't really need a heavy, 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 heavy braid when you're using your spinner rod. I think the lighter the braid you can get away with, the better off you are. Small. Sorry, bro. Hit the spot lock real quick. Doo -doo. And there should be a couple of nice ones around that tree right there. You think. Now what I do is I just tech expose this little guy right here. Wind's blowing a little bit, I just tech expose him. And that way it just really keeps that bait. I give him a little bit more because that soft plastic, I can sort of pitch him about anywhere. I can pitch him around that grass up there. I'm ready to go. It's tough to throw him in the wind like right now. A little tougher to throw him in the wind. But, Catch them. Now using the same head, the thing that I do, if I'm trying to target a little bit bigger large mouth, because I don't think profile matters as much for small mouth, which I tend to try, you're always gonna try to, if you wanna go out and just have a good time, you throw that rattle on the net on, on, on this little deal, uh, and you're not gonna get it hung up as much, you're gonna be able to catch a lot of fish, but if you're targeting a little bit bigger fish, I'll just take the five inch lunker log, this watermelon red, I'll cut him down just above the egg sack. Okay, that's about a four inch bait. Then, I'll just tech expose him like I do the rattle and it. Same setup, everything, eighth ounce, finesse rugby. Get a little bit of grass off there. Show you what I'm talking about. Let's see if we can't get a bite. It has the exact same action of just that spiraling action, that straight tail worm, and just a little bit bigger profile. So people ask me all the time, what is my go-to rig when things get tough? This is definitely one of them. The four, basically the five inch lunker log cut down, there's a little one. Five inch lunker log cut down, uh, about an inch of it, making it a four inch lunker log on that, that finesse rugby. I can catch pretty good ones and with major league fishing being a two pound minimum, if I'm on largemouth fishery, I can't catch the pound and a halfers and the, 
you know, you're not going to be able to target those fish and, and they're not scoreable. So you got to get a little bit better than the average bite. And that's why I just bumped him up just a little bit. And you catch big ones on a smaller worm. Do not, I mean, shoot, I, I know of some seven pounders that have been caught on a little baby Ned. Large mouth. So, I mean, small mouth are one thing because I don't think profile really tends to matter as much. But large mouth, it seems to matter more often than not. So I try to sort of just pitching this guy around. Seems like it's about seven feet deep on the edge of these bushes right here. It's a perfect little habitat for him. I don't want to, still I'm using light lines, so I'm not casting like way up in there, you know? But there should still be a few of them just sitting here right on the edge, right? To... Not a great big one, but you can sort of see when I got a bite on that, it was a little bit better fish. Cutting him down, same setup, two pounder. Not a great big one. Hey, that's what it is. Hey, so hopefully you guys learned a few things about Ned Rig fishing and specifically finesse weedless Ned Rig fishing. This is the way I have it set up. Um, this is the setup. I will leave the, 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 the setup. Um, the head, all that stuff in the description below. So if you're looking for that, as long with the rod, the reel, the line, all that good stuff that I explained throughout the video. Thank you all so much for watching. See you on the next one.